On this video, I am going to define trauma. On video part two, I am going to identify the symptoms of a trauma disorder. Then I will give you two tips to begin addressing and healing your trauma. Hi, my name is Naomi. I am a licensed clinical social worker. On this channel, I teach about psychotherapy and what you can do to improve your thoughts, feelings, and behavior. If you are new here, consider clicking the subscribe button below. It's free. If you also ring the bell, you will be notified when I upload the new video. Trauma. People use that word so frequently and sometimes they use it inappropriately. So what is a trauma? According to a 1987 definition by the American Psychological Association, trauma is an experience that falls outside of the realm of everyday human experiences and would be troublesome to almost anyone, which means that it's not normal. This trauma is not something that should normally happen and it would bother almost all of us. There is no conclusive list of traumas, but here are a few examples. Surviving a natural disaster or a fire, a robbery or a burglary, an assault or an automobile accident or a plane crash, being a child victim of physical, sexual, emotional abuse or neglect, being a rape victim or experiencing violence as an adult, witnessing a natural or violent death, having a murder in your family, being a combat soldier or a refugee, being tortured or having an overwhelming negative job experience, having a bad divorce or marriage or being tortured in that divorce or marriage <laughs> or not, or just being tortured. There are three criteria to define psychological trauma. First, it's unexpected. Second, you were not prepared. Third, you have a sense of helplessness. There was nothing you could do to prevent it from happening. That's trauma. Trauma is subjective. That means it's personal. My trauma is mine. It is not yours. They are not duplicated. It is a personal experience. It is about how you experience it, not your mother, your brother, or your sister. Trauma is not about how you should or should not feel about it. It is how you actually feel. We can't compare because everything about you since the moment you were born impacts your response to trauma. This indicates that children are at a greater disadvantage than adults because they have not had much of life and they are not fully developed or equipped to handle trauma. For something to be identified as traumatic, first, you must experience it as threatening to the physical or emotional well-being of you or someone close to you through proximity or relationship. For instance, if you have a cousin or an uncle or an aunt in another city and something horrible or something bad happens to them, you can experience that as a trauma because they're close to you. They're close to your heart. For something to be considered traumatic, secondly, it includes a sense of helplessness along with fear, horror, or disgust that impacts your ability to function. For children and youth, this includes a negative impact on healthy development. Ricky Greenwald wrote, Trauma during childhood and adolescence is now so common as to be normative. So, although trauma is not normal, it happens so much before a person becomes an adult that the experience of having a trauma is normal. Wow, that's scary and sad at the same time. For children and youth, this includes a negative impact on healthy development. That is sometimes interpreted as negative personality traits developing or behavioral issues. He's just bad. Mm, he's not just bad. He's been traumatized. Hmm, maybe by you. 
So as I taught on my stress video, growth and development continues until about age 24 or 25. And trauma throws off healthy development for youth as stress. So think of trauma as an accelerated, a heightened experience of stress. And so if stress can throw off a young person's development, oh my gosh, trauma is even worse. The response to trauma is going to be different for each of us with different levels or degrees of intensity. Our response depends on so many factors like our age, life experiences, the amount of preparation time for the event. So if you knew that the hurricane was coming and you prepared, then you are probably better off than the person who had no idea or just believed it was fake news. Our response also depends on the amount of damage done to you physically, emotionally, and spiritually, or to your property if your home was demolished. Oh gosh, that's just the thought of it for me is overwhelming. The amount of death and devastation you witness how responsible you feel for causing or not preventing the event. For instance, if your family said, come on, you got to get out. And you said, no, no, we can wait a little bit longer. And then something happened. I remember um, when I was younger, I was in a train accident. I wasn't traumatized by it, but my sister wanted us to drive, me and my younger sister to drive in the car with her. But my mom said, no, I want to keep them with me. And then we had that train accident. And she felt bad because if we had gone with my sister, we wouldn't have been in the accident. However, the worst that happened to me was somebody threw their orange juice in my face. <laughs> so I wasn't traumatized. <laughs> Our response also depends on the supports you have or don't have and not being able to find meaning in the experience. Dr. Laurel Parnell, a clinical psychologist wrote, that trauma causes one to develop limiting and sometimes errors in beliefs about oneself or the world. This means your thinking may be off or wrong as a result of the traumatic event you experienced. So we don't need to pretend like we haven't had these bad experiences because we probably have. And not just you, but me and the person next to you and the person over here. I've been a social worker for over 25 years. Wow, a long time. And I can only count two people. I was thinking about it earlier. Two people who I met who did not have traumas before I met them. And they were adults. And I thought, wow, that is such a blessing. Hmm. Some people have many traumas. And that's sad. Does this sound like someone you know? Or perhaps people say some of this stuff about you. So what do you do? Have patience with that person. And if it's you, have patience with yourself. Well, that was an intensive video on trauma. Nonetheless, I've enjoyed our time together. If you have too, share this video. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button below and come back. It's free. Until next time, live healthy in your whole being, your mind, your body, and your spirit.